Hey, it's Jeff, the owner here at Whitland Aquatics, and today we are going to go through the care for acans and try and share some of the secrets that we've had over the 10 plus years we've kept care of them. To start out with, we get asked if it's an easy coral to keep care of, and I would say that it is. Um, it could be one of the, the first ones you could try and start if you're going to put coral into your tank. One thing that makes them easy is they're going to let you know if they are happy or not. They have a really nice puffy look to them and you can tell if you are potentially giving them too much light. They will retract and you'll see the skeleton around them. Um, if they are not being fed, you know, you can also see that, you know, kind of retraction of the polyp. So unlike a coral such as an Acropora where if they're not happy, it could go straight to bleaching and that point there's not much turning back and the coral will you know die quick and in some instances an a can can show signs if it's not happy where it's at so for that reason you know i'm going to give it the easy coral tag that you know it can be a beginner because it, it should show sh signs if it's not happy where you have it here at whitland we look at the lighting first and, and try to figure out where we're going to place the coral uh, we're going to start them low in the tanks we're definitely not going to want to give them a ton of light to start with they're not one of those like an acropora or, or a, some of the other species that like high lighting uh, we're going to start them off low probably around 75 to 100 par when it's all said and done it, it's not one of the high light requiring corals so most of the coral that we have that are acans are kept in the 100 to 150 par and they do just fine in that level so overall i would say medium to low lighting but definitely not high When you first get an ACAN, the best placement would be in the sand bed, and you can work the coral uh, higher in the tank from there, but you never really want the ACAN higher than, you know, mid-level because it is definitely not a high light requirement coral and actually can uh, make the colors morph into you know, solid reds and oranges, and it, it loses some of the beautiful colors that they can display if you give them too much lighting. Uh, as with any coral, you want to keep stable parameters. Here at Whitland, we keep most of our grow out tanks in the alkalinity range of 9, calcium around 450, and magnesium a little on the higher side, 1450 um, to 1500 on some of the tanks. They want a tank with nutrients. They love to be fed. Uh, they have a great feeding response. As you can see, uh, when an ACAN is in feeding mode trying to pick up things out of the water column, you'll see the polyps, um, the feeding tentacles on the inside extend and, and try to catch whatever's in the water column. So they are a fun coral to feed and to watch feed just because they, again, have a good, good response, unlike some coral where it's hard to tell what they're taking in. Uh, here at Whitland, we feed benepets, and again, they're gonna pick up things that are in the water column when we feed uh, all of the frozen food that goes into the tank, such as brine, mysis, uh, anything else that they can catch uh, is is fair game as well. But you don't want to get too big of pellets or meteor foods because, again, they may have a hard time pulling them in within the, uh, the mouth of the coral. Acans like flow, uh, medium to low, uh, definitely not high though. And again, back to an earlier point mentioned, uh, acans will let you know if you're giving them too much flow because similar to too high of lighting or not enough nutrients, they can start to retract uh, the polyps. Again, they always have a very uh, puffy, fleshy uh, look to them. And if you're giving them too much flow and you start to see any of the skeleton around the polyp, they're probably getting too much flow uh, or one of the other factors uh, because again, they should always have just a subtle flow to them uh, versus uh, anything direct or you know heavy uh, focused right on them. In regards to aggression, uh, acans are not going to seek out to sting corals around them, uh, such as a torch coral, which we also have a YouTube video on the care for that if you want to take a look at the torch coral. But in regards to the acan, uh, they're not going to demonstrate that same behavior, so they're more of a peaceful coral. Uh, you just have to watch and be careful you don't put them in path of something that can reach out and sting it. Now it's time to share some of the secrets and uh, tips that we've had that we have here at Whitland over the 10 years 
plus that we've kept care of them to keep that coloration because again that's what is the attraction for them is they like a tank with heavy blue lighting and that makes them look the best you know obviously if you have the the blue lights they're going to like that the best and they're going to look the best because again that that fluorescence of the blue um, not just for the health of them but how they look is is something we found compared to tanks that we have a wider spectrum in our grow out tanks uh, the ones with the heavier blue seem to hold their colors uh, better than if we have a, a heavier white or a me medium white spectrum included as well another thing with acans is they like to be fed and acans they like a, a dirtier tank from what we've seen they can almost be thrown nutrients similar to zoas and some of the soft coral that are very forgiving with uh, higher phosphates and nitrates. Uh, we found that same uh, care for acans can be very beneficial too, so they definitely like to be fed. Those are the tanks that um, the acans, you know, we see performing the best because, again, sometimes it's not just the testable parameters that you have on a day-to-day -day basis, but some of the, you know, the other ones, so trace elements and um, anything that you can do, such as like Reef Energy A+, A plus, or AB plus, those are um, good, you know, coral aminos, all of that matter uh, with ACANs as you're trying to keep their coloration. I know it's not what everyone wants to hear in regards to uh, the last secret, because it's not really a secret, it's a fact, is no matter what you do, sometimes the ACANs will change colors. That's just the way it goes. And, um, you know, we'll have a tank full of a minute at a time that we bring in and we get them all photoed, we, we had same flow, same lighting, same nutrients, same care. Everything's identical. And some of them will just change colors. And, and that's just the way it is. And again, that's something that we're striving to, you know, try to do everything that we can to keep, you know, the colors on them. But what's important is once they are cut up and then start being aquacultured, that's when you really get confidence of which ones will hold the colors because they absolutely can keep the coloration. It's just not that all of them will do that. You know, here at Whitland, we have some of the acans. They're in their third or fourth or fifth generation of fragging that we've had for years. And they're still the same color as, you know, when we originally got them in. And it's not always something that you're doing wrong. It's just the nature of the type of coral that they can morph and change into a different color uh, over time, uh, regardless of what you do with it.